Hello, everyone. Welcome to another cold one. So I'm your host, Anything for Views. Join me today, my mate Max. Hello. How are you going? Our sponsors today, <laughs> as always, Cool Shirts. Have a shirt so cool. Use code cold ones, 10% off. And Gamer Subs, as always, code cold ones, 10% off as well. Our guest today, sitting right there, is the Mac Daddy of MILFs, who has impacted pop culture a lot in the very little time he's been a musician. He's known for his beats, Betty, Gravy Train, and Mr. Clean, and many more. But with him, his career extends way beyond music because he's fucking awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Young Gravy. Is the fog funny? Did I read that good? Greetings. Is, yeah, uh, it was pretty good, man. I liked it. Did that sound familiar to you at all? Uh, a bit. Not really, no. I really <laughs> suck at reading. We should put on uh, Logan Paul. Why? You should get it up. Why? Just real quick. Was well, that their intro from Impulsive? Is that the joke? Someone should get it up. Is Let's that what they said? It. Is that what they said? Today, he's sitting right there. He's the Mac Daddy of MILFs who has impacted pop culture. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty... You guys are <laughs> fucking make me look a fool. Let's get an original intro. We okay. should keep. We, get, we need to keep that. No, nah, I'm, I'm gonna do a new one, but we can keep the other one. Okay. Our guest today climbed to SoundCloud success in 2017 with his debut EP, Mr. Clean, the smooth-spoken Minnesota milk um, lover. Minnesota, Minnesota milk lover, lover. Yes. Okay. Has now amassed over 600 trillion streams online. I think that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. And is joining us. Wait, hold on. What's the real number? Man, I want to say probably like 1.5 bill right, across lot, right? everything. It's quite a bit. We'll just let other people fact check that. Joining us in the middle of Australian tour, please welcome Young Gravy. Hey. You have a third fucking intro for me? Chad, that sounds kind of familiar. Shut up. Anyway, welcome. Thank you for coming here. Thank you um, for having me. How you been enjoying Australia? Very much. You have? Yep. I have been enjoying yep. it. What have you been up to so far? Way too much fucking shit, man. We were in... Way too much fucking or... Both. We we landed in <laughs> in shitting, man. No, we landed <laughs> landed the first day in Sydney, and then we went to this brand Camilla and got dripped out. Then we did two shows, in, three shows in Sydney. Three shows, like you were you were booked for three shows in Sydney. Well, well, over it what was period? Over two nights. So it was it was two big venue shows and then a, an after party, which was which was quite lit. The next day we did a shitload of press for like eight hours, like interviews and whatnot. You said something about Kyle and Jackie O yep. or whatever. Yeah, I watched that one. Yep, we did all them thing, little things uh and then triple j which is your radio thing that's like our like do you guys have like a main radio in america that's no like, we have a hella a uh, that's but, like the big one in australia but yeah so i got put on there they're like hottest 100 songs of the year yeah <laughs> number 97 yeah. Just, nice. Just, nice. Made the, just made the cut. So we just got a bunch of interviews and shit and then we i said fuck it whatever do them all on the same day and it was like eight hours straight but Jesus it was cool Christ. it was cool man So Betty. Yeah, it's, it's uh, called Betty, like Betty White. Yeah. So that just went platinum in what, like seven months? Seven months it went it went platinum in the US. I don't know how long it took here, but it did go it's platinum here too. Yep. Yeah, it was um really weird because when I first heard about you, I, I heard about you through Baby No Money. You said that you guys are like really close. How'd you guys meet? SoundCloud. SoundCloud? Same SoundCloud thing. DMs, yeah. Yeah. Oh really? We met when neither of us had any fucking yeah. clout at all or anything. We were in a little Facebook group where you you know, you'd send your song and we'd support each other and like we'd repost and stuff. This is when I was just it's like the fucking hustle together from yeah, the fucking bottom. Just starting out. And there's a bunch of people in that group. And I was very particular about my music. I didn't want to collab with anybody until I got to the point where I could collab with like Juicy J. But Baby No Money was was dope. And I saw his potential. He had sick flows, but he would just rap on these beats that sounded like fucking pots and pans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'd be like a like fucking Sample like some, that, sample that. Yeah, I should. Sample like some, that, sample that. Yeah, I should. I wanted to have like a Snoop Dogg to my to my Dr. Dre, you know? Yep. Like I, it would be I thought it'd be dope to have something like that. There's also there's other artists that we met at the same time named Tribute the Kid. Mm-hmm. It was very cool. You've done songs. I've done a few songs with him, and I actually then, yeah. I signed him. I actually I, I got a, a label imprint, so oh, I actually cool. have a label, Bread and Butter Records. Check it out. I like that. I like that. Bread and Butter, first signee is Trippy the Kid. Your recent song, um, 
I hadn't, you hadn't posted anything almost all during COVID. And the only time I was really seeing you was collab tracks. And that was really mostly with Baby No Money. Yeah. And then or all just the, fucking all over TikTok. Yeah, that too. Were you working on the album the whole time or? Well, during COVID, I made a whole album and dropped it. And then yep. since then, I made another album and yep. dropped it. Yep. Yeah. So I have made a lot of music since then. Yeah. Okay. And we did an album together, Baby No Money and I. And we just finished another one. Not out yet though? Uh, No, no, no. Baby Baby 3 coming uh, probably spring. I don't know if you remember the... The, uh, the podcast that we did with him, like when he was talking about you specifically, um, he kind of told this his origin story and from his point of view, where he was showing uh, his uh, DJ, which I'm sure you know, Dan, uh, your shit. And yeah. Dan, in the thing, he was like, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. He sounds kind of goofy. You know, but Alex was always like in your corner saying like, now nah, this is like really unique. That's what you need because like you need to have something to be seen because everyone's making the same shit. That's if someone kinda, has a unique voice. That's kind of how it, yeah, that's kind of how it started. Like, like I started popping off a lot harder than him at first, but I wanted to bring him with like, you know, I wanted to like hand up the home. I wanted thing. like a homie to like work with. I think he was talented from the start, but he got better. He got even better. And, and, and when we made the baby gravy EP, we had fucking, I mean, it was a five songs and they were all yeah. hits. They were slappers. So we dropped that and then and then his shit kind of took off. My shit took off. For a while, I was a decent bit bigger and, and he would come on tour and open for me. Yeah. And then he really had his fucking moment and he, he dropped La 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 at a mame. We actually made a song the same exact day it was this was like a three hour session we made edamame and say la vie really like, that was made in the same time frame yes damn but like that's three hours bro and both of those are like i mean say la vie is like that's a banger though that's actually one yeah. of my favorite songs people so love that shit a lot yeah. but but basically he i kind of helped put him on and then he got better and better at making music mm -hmm. and now he's fucking mad talented has all these crazy fucking ideas and and i, I don't know when we're in the studio we just go crazy it's it's and it's kind of like the same with me where i was never a music person i was a business kid and mm -hmm. then i learned i taught myself music after the business like when i started i didn't know shit about music yeah and you were like a marketing major marketing when we first met we were both in uni i graduated early because i dropped a major and I went on tour. So I think he was in college for almost like another year after that. Finally got him to come on tour, but he could only do half of it because he had to finish college. It was crazy. Like when I graduated, I couldn't go to my graduation ceremony because I had a show mm -hmm. in New York, <laughs> which was badass. Then Alex missed his because he came on my tour right after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a two-part question. Well, not two-part. I, two two, I, I, two, I got two questions. Do y'all take shots? Or, or oh, yeah, Darcy, give us some shots. What do you like? What do you want? Tequila. Tequila? You love... Uh, Tequila. <laughs> you're a fucker. Wait, while well, it's fresh off the tongue, I just got a question. <laughs> yeah. When you go into the studio, you made these really good songs in such a short amount of time. Is it just because it came to you or like, does, do you find working on a song for longer makes it better or is it just the right time, right place, right person, right people? The last thing you said, yeah. One of my other biggest songs is called One Thought, Two Thought, Red Thought, Blue Thought. And I was just in the mood. I was in the right zone. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned earlier how, well, to you guys, how I lived in a commune in Montana when I was on probation. Mm -hmm. And I was in community service. And this was the, the moment that I found out that I was off probation. And I was so fucking hyped. In your song where you said you're on probation, you weren't joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. So, so, so that song, I wrote that. The day that I got off probation, I couldn't drink or smoke or anything. I was getting tested every, like all the time. And I went to this fucking like breakfast diner and like convinced them to give me liquor. And, <laughs> and I got fucked up. And I wrote One Thought Two Thought in 30 minutes. I just sat there with this beat that I found on YouTube. It was a free YouTube beat. <laughs> <laughs> and I called a studio in town. There's only one. It was a small ass town in Montana. While, while you were drunk. Yeah, while I mean, I wasn't like fucking. Late, I know, yeah, but, but you've been like, drinking. Yeah, I've been drinking. Yeah. And then I went there and, and I recorded it in like two takes. In total, recording, writing, everything took less than like an hour. It was because I had just gotten off probation and I felt so fucking good and I was so yeah. confident in myself. I second guess myself a lot when I write, but I didn't second guess shit and I just. Wrote, that boost of serotonin this that beautiful day. Beautiful song, and it's still like one of the most hyped to perform. Interesting. Cheers, cheers to that. Cheers, cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers to getting off probation. Yeah, for real. I haven't man. been there yet. Have you told anyone why you've been on probation, or is that a secret? Is there a fucking chaser to this fucking thing? Uh, what? Have you told? Is there a story behind why you're on probation? 
If you've told a million times, you can just make yeah. it short and sweet. It's a, it, it is a long story. <sighs> Give us the dot point. If, oh. if, so, if somebody wants like the full story, if you go on my Reddit AMA. Shout out, bro. <laughs> I was 18 and I was in Georgia and I was wrong place, wrong time. Whack ass cops in this like deep south ratchet ass area. You were a menace I've heard in your early years in general. I was, a, yeah, I used to fight people all the time and yeah. I, I have a strong record, but yeah, it was hard to get in here into your country, but. <laughs> Uh. I have something to give you. This isn't gonna man, man cut. This is just for our research. You know, I said we were releasing an alcohol. This is it here. This is the peach flavor. Everyone that comes and visits, we just kind of give it to them. So if there's if there's anything you don't like about it, like just tell us, because we need to know. Picture that you're holding a frosty can though, you know? Maybe like hold that in your other hand and try to like cross. Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good, that's good. Pretty fucking good. You like that? Like, yeah, right. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Okay. We're getting towards the final flavor. So if there's anything you don't like about it, just tell us because that means we can change it. I'm not kidding. It's really good. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank God. So it's perfect. It's fucking, All right, cool. it's honestly perfect. Yeah. You're calling it grog. Oh, he's calling it grog. grog. Yeah. Anyway, speaking about our up and coming grog, we have a thing on a show that we haven't done with everyone. We kind of just started it. We missed the last person, but we're going to do it with you. You told me you're into college parties, right? I went to the oh, oh. number one party university in America. Sounds like which, uh, okay, uh, the world. You got some good credentials there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm... Sounds like you know how to drink a beer. Maybe very quickly. Are we doing shoeies? What's going on? Well, if you turn around, we have this thing on the show, which we just started. It's a standard beer in a cup. So you have a time to drink it. My You'll see Chad's best at the top is four seconds. Sorry, four minutes. So, wait. 4.85 so, no, seconds. Yeah, no, four seconds. <laughs> At four minutes. Yeah, four seconds. Do you think you could beat that time? Can I wait like 10 minutes? Oh, we can give you 10 minutes. We can leave yeah, it there and talk right. about the next topic. Will right, this cool. fucking thing out of here, bro? Now leave it in there. It's just yeah, so yeah, you no, remember. Leave it there. Leave it there to, to threaten me. All right, now leave it there, Scott. You can leave it there. <laughs> what, 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 what kind of beer is it? Any, is it? any beer you want. You want like a Liasahi Japanese beer? Something not uh, strong? I would like to have it poured now. Darcy, can we get two pints poured for us, please? Sat next to us, ready for and, when he's ready. And I'm not amazing at chugging beer, so I'm not like. There's, only, there's only two fuckers on the board, bro. Like, even if you do the worst, you're still coming third. You're still third. You still got the bronze medal. Who the fuck's Logwig? You were saying upstairs as well that you weren't really into all the internet stuff. You don't know about the memes you went on Reddit and all that. As you've moved on with your music career, you've kind of expanded into doing a lot of collaborations with people that are on YouTube. Would you say you're covering all bases or is there people that you watch on YouTube that you actually really fuck with? The only YouTuber I really watch is fucking most critical. Yeah. <sighs> He's the shortest guy I know. You're the tallest guy I know. And we're, and we're that boys. That video is so fucked up. We had to cook together for fucking three hours, Dude, man. He... I actually have been a fan of his. I found him when I was like fucking 14 because I was playing Fallout New Vegas and I was like, man, Good where are like the weapons at, bro? And I looked up like Fallout New Vegas, like secret weapons. And then I found a video of that. It was before he revealed his face and he was like. "You." I feel like you kind of related to that because you didn't reveal your face for yeah, like the yeah, first one yeah, and a half yeah. years. Absolutely, absolutely. I think he's fucking awesome. He's hilarious and he's absolutely killing it. Shout out to Most Critical, Charlie, we love you. Forgot what else we were talking about, but I like him. I really want to iron this out. You have a lyric in a song. Man, this fucking sucks, bro. I think I got Will this dude shut the up? Sometimes you say you're six, seven and a half. I'm turning this off. This Sucks. Thank God I have Empires of Puzzles, the award-winning free-to-play puzzle RPG game, to keep me entertained while I watch this f roll up. I love puzzles. This Empires of Puzzles game was easy to pick up, but damn, it's hard to master. I'm gonna need to give this my full attention if I wanna get all of the 400 plus collectible heroes. They're introdu- New unique heroes every month? What? What the- Oh my God. <laughs> I might have to quit cold ones. I gotta focus on my empire. For real, I'm Hang on, okay, I gotta make a call real quick. Deep beep, boop, boop, beep. <laughs> Chad. Yes, hello, Max, my friend, how are you? Have you finished reviewing the new talk show yet? Yeah, it's great. Anyway, I need you to help me out. <sighs> you didn't watch it, did you? No, I, I definitely did. I really liked the part with the gravy. Can you please accept my invite to play Empires and Puzzles? What? Empires and Puzzles? Isn't that the sponsor for our episode? Yes, brother. I cannot get enough of the puzzles. It's <laughs> <laughs> not meant to actually play the game. You just need to pretend so we get lots of money. No, you don't understand, Chad. I am 
Max. And if you accept my invite, I will receive literally hundreds of gems and VIP passes. And you will also receive 100 gems and a 10 day VIP pass after level five, making both of our gaming experiences way more epic. That does sound low key bustled though. I'm about to eat a bunch of shampoo real quick, then I'll accept your invite right away. Okay, sounds good. I forgot to invite him to the upcoming beach party event. <laughs> yeah? I forgot to tell you to break out the water balloons and the beach chairs because this beach summer event is gonna be hot. This upcoming event in the game will be live from June 12th to July 16th. What? Dive into this event with 10 old new heroes with a summer theme, exclusive event stages, and even some special power-ups. Okay. All right, Dogplex, roll the game. Empires and Puzzles is an exciting match three RPG in which you simply match shields of the same color to attack. The more you match, the stronger the attacks. But make sure to use your specials at the strategically right moment or you will die in real life. This game follows the story of a kingdom in need of saving from the enemies of the realm. You got the mystical seas of Atlantis, the realm of the gods in Valhalla, and even to the tombs of ancient Egypt. Train your heroes and build up their talent tree to upgrade and power up your team. After victory, you can use your plunders to grow up your empire by leveling up food and iron production and even summon more heroes. Join an alliance and raid other alliances in PvP or by going toe to toe with other players in head to head battles for amazing rewards. So what are you waiting for? Hit the link in our bio to download the game today and start leveling up your heroes and protect the realm. Hey yo, thank y'all for the age of to empires and puzzles. You have a lyric in a song where you say you're six six because you've said it flows off the tongue better than saying you're six seven. Yeah. But most of the time you do say you're six seven. Sometimes you say you're six seven and a half. Can we get a stable measurement and confirm it on Wait, the show? Do, do we have, have a measuring tape? Do y'all have the tape? I think I got one right here, bro. <laughs> I thought you got one. Oh, you've been holding on to it. I think I got one right let's here. Let's fucking go. Oh, let's go. Okay, okay, let's do it. Max and I are also like pretty tall. I still have to look we, up to you. Yeah, like. we feel like manlets. He's slightly taller. You are 203 centimeters. That checks out, bro. Uh, 203 centimeters, baby. I've seen enough shit where because you are so tall, everyone's too scared to actually measure you, you know? We yeah. needed to get some real shit for the Wikipedia. I want to measure my penis. Okay. <laughs> Pass me a beer. I'm going to pour these up, and when you're ready to chug them, we'll chug them. But before we start chugging beers, <laughs> we have a little segment around here. It's called Max Gets Bored at 3 a.m. and starts looking at your old tweets. Oh, yeah, I love yeah, Twitter. Yeah, let's go. So, I was silly back in the day, man. Sounds like you're trying to cushion the blow. So just, just a backstory. We were about to get guests on. Max stays up all night and, and digs deep, and he finds some tweets, and we need context. Yeah, I bad. love, totally love Twitter. This is, this is you ready? A young gravy tweet. Gravy don't fuck with you, because you look like Nicolas Cage. What did you mean by that? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. This got two likes, by the way. <laughs> two likes? <laughs> so it was 2016. Yeah. But I didn't have any clout or hose. What do you have against Nicolas Cage? I love Nicolas Cage now. I was a different person back then. I would fuck with you more if you look like Nicolas Cage. All right, I'm going to let you read this next All one. right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Pulling fat hose, call me Hugh Hefty. Ooh, I like that. Isn't that kind of in one of your songs? I said pulling fat hose, you'd call me Young Gravity. Okay. You, like, should, re like you should reuse that as a bar for sure. That's my mom's birthday. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one has a lot of a lot of likes. 487 likes. Oh, okay. What That's year? how you know he's still humble. What year? 2017. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. I said airport employees stay thicker than anyone else, I swear. What, what am I, wrong? Am what I did, wrong? What did you mean by that? You guys haven't been to the Atlanta airport before. Do you stand yeah, by yeah. that? Do you stand by that? Yes. Ride or die? Well, no, because, I mean, strippers are thicker, but... You're definitely the most horny person that I've ever met. Do you want to have sex? Why not? Word up. I'll read this one. I'll read this one. Pass you. I was snapping. No, but... Okay. Bro. I was doing a great job. Gravy with the gin. 
That is like. Are you like gin? What's the interpretation That's of that? That's all I said. That's yeah. it. I've seen you used to say that you ordered gin on your when you right. on your first tour. Yeah, yeah you're right. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. What gin did you used to Bombay get? Bombay Sapphire. Bombay. Damn. Inspired by Juicy J. And you, you why? Because Juicy J liked it, and then I wanted to be like him. So that I, was when you started touring. Yeah, but I still drink it pretty often. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think Do I you uh, like gravy. He does good research, man. Wait, how's this? Lot. How's this for research? <laughs> Woo, baby! Now I heard you used to drink this uh, by swigging it and then chasing it with milk. I've heard. <laughs> Is that really? Is that real? I've, no, I didn't hear the milk part. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Do we have any milk here? I'll, I'll do it right now. Can we all do some fucking? I don't know Bombay if I can mix milk with. It's not bad. It's, it tastes like a pine tree, so it's like pine but like, tree. Do you know? Do you know how like milk and alcohol like mix? They don't. They like separate. So why did they make? Uh, so so what's do the, fucking what's, food and, what's the, and water. What's the milky? Good point. What's like the, good point. I, yeah. What's the milky alcohol? Like uh, Bailey's. 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 Yeah. Why does that exist? How does that? How do they do that? That's not real milk. It's cream. It's cream. It's cream. It's like a cream. You say. <sighs> Darcy, do, do we have milk? We don't have milk. Alright, we don't, check, we don't have milk. Or check this segue. Alright, so you said cream. Is it true your friend Chase in summer camp where you worked used to be called Heavy Creamer? Dude. That and you was, were gravy. Yes. And is that the origin of your rap name? Did you yes. take that? And then you liked Young Lean. Dude, I and you just, combined I'm that. Like, I'm about to like tear up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's the most accurate. Yes. So when I first started rapping, yes, the name Young Gravy came from when I worked at a summer camp. And it was because my like me and my crew would all rap together. The like primary other good rapper was my boy Chase Lee. Shout out to Chase Lee. But he it was amazing at rapping and probably better than me. And I and I just couldn't convince him to fucking really pursue with me. But but it was Young Gravy and Heavy Creamer. Mm. That was his that was his rap name. That's a fucking good rap name too. Yeah. So you worked at the summer camp when you were like 16, 17. Yeah, and I went there as a kid before that. And then I became so a, a counselor. You were a counselor. I was a camp counselor and a sailing instructor. And actually during during the uh counselor and training program you have to do like a like a 10 day hiking trip yep me and my homie were really hungry because they give equal portions to everybody and we were the two big dudes we trapped a chipmunk and we we killed it <laughs> and we I'm ate i'm sorry that's fucked up bro. We, we ate it yeah what? so our friend gutted it and then we we cooked it on the on the fire with some greek seasoning i think that's okay like yeah, uh, not not wasting it you know no we we were hungry as fuck and we we saw we were like man let's let's find some goddamn food to eat and we ate a chipmunk i was also a sailing instructor which is just kind of kind of cool for the for the ladies out there i i could sail a, a boat do you still remember any of those uh techniques to sail a boat or would you get lost at sea now i if it was a very small boat i could sail it easily like a little dinghy like a little motherfucker a little sunfish that's what we call them the little guys okay. if it had more than like eight ropes nah I feel like if we were all of us right now in this room were transported to a boat you would be the guy I would at least look to to be Thank like you, you yeah. have to have some I'd idea. also put you in front of all the zombies and be like I your do reach think, is longer who the fuck mentioned zombies bro? I do zombie think apocalypse that in, and we're on the sea I yeah, can see yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a that's a, fucked a, up a zombie sea Apocalypse, man. Yeah, I'm ready. So uh, to tie it back, while you were a camp fucking counselor. counselor, you used to, in your spare time, hang out by the fire or whatever, fucking drink, rap with your friends. That's where gravy came up with uh, heavy creamer. How much later was it that you were like, I should revisit that? It was probably two years. It's probably two years that I that I had like the rap name Young Gravy at the summer camp. And we would fucking spit and we would, you know, do our thing. And then two years later, once I became a fucking business student and I was starting other companies and I like wanted to make music, oh. I went back to the name like two years later. So, so, so Young Gravy really started as just a casual ass. Between friends around the Between the, the homies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what were you using before you went back to Young Gravy? Little steamer. Which you changed because it sounded like shit, and uh, people told you it sounded like yeah, shit. Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like it was a little steamer, shower. and people thought it sounded like shit. And then I was Mr. Butter, Mr. Butter. Aioli, Daddy Aioli came later. Okay, that was uh, after Gravy. After Young Gravy, so after after Young Gravy, I started making music, and then and then I wanted sort of an alter ego because I wanted to put out some weird shit. So I started using Daddy Aioli. 
Okay. Like the horny shit. <laughs> He's been horny a long yeah. time. Yeah. If, if you search like on YouTube and look at like Lil Steamer or Daddy Ailey, there are like. Damn, we can get some like really shitty mixed they're, they're, original yeah, songs. Yeah, like deep cuts <laughs> that I just like wanted to drop for fun that I didn't want associated with my name. Yeah, that's crazy. Shout that's out crazy. Shout out to Heavy Creamer, man. I hope he's doing well. Shout yeah, out to Chase, Chase Lee. Brother. Oh my god, the fucking beer segment. All right, Darcy with the stopwatch. You're gonna come in here and be our referee, please. Darcy's gonna give you a countdown. You can hold it as close to your lips as possible. I feel like uh, when Ludwig did it, it had to start on the table. Oh, it had to start Anyone on the remember table. That? Yeah, sorry, it did. No, it got, it's gonna start on the table. Do you wanna go first or do you want me to go first? You go first. All right. Hang on, I'm out of practice. Hang is, on. It, is it stop when the empty glasses? Here's the table. When you hear yes. the sound of the glass hitting the table. Yeah. All right, Darcy, give me the countdown. Three, two, one. Go. Damn, that was clean. You made an improvement. Oh! 4.40. You sucked that shit like a dick. You were man. doing that, yeah. That was like. I got practice, baby. That, you practice. were doing that shit in I'm motion, like kind of brother. afraid now. All right, I don't think I'm going to beat you, but let's do it. All right. Three, two, one, go. That was good. Did you beat Ludwig? That was, I didn't feel good. You did fall in the middle, 5.48. Ooh, he beat, he you beat, beat Ludwig, wow. We're gonna take a photo of you right after that, just to yeah. put it on the scoreboard. Could you get, can you get one of me? Yep, get in there. Three, two, one. All right, Max. You want to get on the you want to get on the, the yeah, scoreboard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's fucking close this segment right. out. Okay. If you want to really want to join the scoreboard, Darcy's gonna come in and he's gonna do the official timer. Let's see where you are. Let me just establish that I don't drink beer. I hate beer. I never drink beer, and I'm not anywhere close to it. as good as Chad as chugging. He's any gonna liquid. say that now, and he's gonna break the record. I want to at least. This is what I want. I want to get close to Ludwig at least. Just think of it like this. You're a child. You've just come in from running around outside. Okay. You go to the fridge and you grab the cooler jug and you pour a glass of water. That's what this is right now. You're thirsty. Okay. Put your hand on his shoulder. Give him encouragement. Gravy, come on. Gravy is making me uncomfortable. He's quite close. Three, two, one, go. Are you sucking that? Mr. Beast. Oh. Holy shit. Did you win? Ah, ah, you motherfucker! Ah. That's good, bro. Like, that's good. I didn't realize when we started this, everyone's score would be so close. We still got to do that. Remind, remember, to we got to do some swigs from the fucking right, Bombay. Chill, let's chill for a sec, though. Well, we don't have milk for the gin, and I really want to do the gin with you. It yeah. doesn't have to be a full shot. Are you down to drink the gin with a twist? Nope. Okay, so he... Wait, with a twist? Okay. We'll all do a swig now, and then Dice is going to bring out what we think would be a good idea to mix it with. All right, let's do a swig first, Greg. Yeah. You first, brother. I might chase it. Do you want something besides alcohol to chase it with? Do you want something sweet from the fridge? No, that's fine. You good? Bombay Sapphire! Bro, I said a swig. That was a... I did not take a lot. Oh. I made it look like a lot, but I did not take a lot. All right, I'm going to just take a little bit. I feel like we should pace ourselves, you know? Yeah. With three hours in, what do you mean pace yourself? I'm ready to get black out. <laughs> My tummy needs a moment. No, you're good. You're good. <sighs> Well, I'll do the same, Bombay. This, this is the throwback though. Do you feel like you're going back on stage? You're like preparing to do a show? It brings me back, but but I've been a, a Johnny Walker black label boy for a while now. Yeah, that's- Do you guys have that out here? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was gonna buy that as well. You're such a fucking little <laughs> sweetie, dude. Wait, wait, yeah. bring that back. Scott, bring that back. I, I talked myself out. You guys even noticed. I thought I'd get away with it, but some will come out. You didn't drink it? Do it. Suck oh it. fuck! I forgot about the secret um, ingredient. I literally just totally forgot. Oh okay. Don't 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 be gravy. It better not be gravy. Is it gonna be gravy? So continue your question, Max. Like meat gravy. Oh man. All right. Whatever. We're vegan. Continue. How do you get your voice like that? Do you eat gravel? The way that I talk. Yeah. It sounds like you eat like a like a fistful of gravel from the driveway and then like gargle honey or something. It's Some, like, it's like, uh, I, like, I like that. Yeah, you, Some, can that. Like that. you can use that. Yeah, it's like deep, but then you gotta have like a sprinkle of honey in there yeah, to make it like I, I think, a little bit tip up to sweet at the end, you know? I think the day that I fall off, I'm just gonna start doing like uh, commercials and whatnot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying?
Is there any preconceived notions that you think, like, do you openly put all, like, your your uh, personality as a rapper, yeah. does that, is that projected from you as Matthew, as a person? Do you exaggerate it, or is it just all you? Because, like... It is. It is. That's a really good and, question. But, but it's totally fine. It's a very good it's, question. It, but it's totally yeah. fine to create characters as a projection, or as a not, a... not a projection, but, like, an extension of yourself, where you're like, okay... Uh, an exacerbated version of you. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this crazy shit, because that's totally, like, uh, interest, more interesting than my own personality. I, w I would say that when, when I started making music, I was exaggerating. Right. And then it kind of just became... I became what I wanted to be. You sort of like aligned those things like together. It was almost like like I wanted to be this gravy motherfucker. Yeah. And then I just kind of put all my effort into it, and I became who you wanted to be. this gravy yeah. motherfucker. Because yeah. I'm I watch earlier like music videos of you, and like and I looks don't mean everything. Don't judge a book by a cover, but you actually looked a lot more nerdy. You had the glasses, the shit. Oh, dude, yeah. the, the oh, haircut. Yeah, the haircut. Dude, it's actually amazing what growing your hair ha out has done mm. for you. If you put like a way side more hose now. Yeah, I've been aiming for the Bee Gees mm. type of look. Like it, a, it looks like, a, like you look a Gibb. lot more like Young Gravy from like the original videos where you had like the big glasses and stuff like that. Yeah, and when dude, I, watched, I used to have like the Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. Yeah, when you originally did your rapping, you'd rap about the probation and the fucking bitches and all that. And all the, and I'll be like, and that's he, what I looked like. Yeah, that, the, that was me. That, that was me. That was like that was you. And I was always like, is it him because of the way you look? But now you you actually look like a person that would. Is it actually true that when you, so it was like a year and a half into doing music before you had shown your face. When you did drop that Mr. Clean uh, video, you've said before that people didn't expect like the voice to come from you. Was there actually a lot of people who did think you were black? More than half. Like well, like that was like an actual- I, th I think, like, I I think a, good, sort of thing. a good portion of the virality of that, that first video I dropped mm -hmm. Was because of how many comments were like, "Yo, I thought he was black." Did you intentionally, before dropping that, seeing all the comments like saying, "Is he black?" Is he? Did you have comments like that and just ignore them until you dropped the video, or did you drop the video and everyone was kind of like, "Oh, we thought he was black." Did I intentionally what? Did you intentionally ignore comments about people you're maybe like, thinking oh, did, you're black? Did you, no, get, no, no, no. did you get comments before the not reveal? Really. Not, not no. that much. Not that much. Not or was it much. only after the reveal that after people reveal made that connection? Really that were like, "Holy fuck!" Came out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they just assumed. I would definitely get DMs with like, bro, you never say the N-word. Like, are, are you black? Like, I, would, ah, okay, I, would, yeah. I would get DMs like that, but it wasn't common. Okay. It wasn't common. When the video blew up, like, I really wasn't that popping, man. It was like, the video blew up, and then it was like, people would hear the... It's probably their first time ever even hearing the song mm -hmm. or hearing of me, and they yeah. would see it, and they would just hear the voice and see the video well, and be you, like, oh, you this is not linked, what I expected. You linked your friend before... You had done a face reveal. You linked one of your friends your song and said, "Like, what do you think of this rapper? You sneaky fucker! How does that work? And this how this fucking dude? Yes. <laughs> I'm actually amazed that I could drink this much and still remember it without looking this at my sick. fucking phone. This is sick, man. That is like very crazy ballsy to do some shit like that. To be yeah. like, oh, this is totally like you totally won't know the what I sound like when if I fucking shifted my so, voice because so, you sound the same while you're talking as you do rapping. So so of. so so what he's talking about is I, for the first six to maybe nine months that I was rapping, I didn't tell anybody that I was a rapper besides my roommates because they would hear me recording, and I sent one of my best friends a link to my song Karen, which was like my first release. And I was like, yo, what do you think of this? Like, what are you saying to your friend to link that? Like, yo, it, I found this fucking sick rapper, bro. It, it was very, it was just like that. It was like, yo, bro, I found this crazy rapper, man. Like, <laughs> I was like, bro, I was like, bro, That's I just, so crazy. That's I was like, bro, so I just wild. found this rapper. I really fuck with him. Like, what do you think? And I sent it to like two or three friends. They all, so, so what happened at that point was they all were like, yo, this is fire. And I still didn't tell them that it was me. Not, really? not, did none of them put two and two together? Like, oh, this sounds like. No, they didn't. They really? Didn't. They didn't. It was three, three, that's, three that's people. Like, that's how you get authentic. And they, like criticism. Like you're looking for real criticism. Yeah. If you ask them that without going that route, you would have. If it was shitty. Yeah. They would have said like, okay, this fucking yeah, sucks. Yeah. So all three of these dudes fucked with it, and then and then about less than a month later, I get a call from my friend. And he was like, yo, I just found this post on Reddit. Because somebody on Hip Hop Heads on Reddit 
posted my song. He was like, bro, I heard this song, bro, there's no way that anyone else would be saying this shit and talking like this. So he knew it was you. I think that shows a true friend when someone finds this it. This dude literally found it on Reddit and he listened to it and he was like, yo, this has to be you. Yeah. Because no one else would say That's this shit. That's someone that knows you then. Like, yeah. Like knows, knows you. That was the first time where I was like, all right, word up. Like this is- Damn, bro. That, that's real. a good way for like people up and coming, you'd say like to link it to people and be like, what do you think of this guy? I just found him on thing just to get feedback from people you know who yeah, might yeah. be interested in the same thing you are to get honest so, feedback. So so I, that was kind of what inspired me, man. I, yeah. I sent my own link to three people and they all said they liked it, but they didn't know it was me. And then within, within a month of that, another person hit me up like yo i know it's you <laughs> literally like yo i know this is you do you do you ever feel that being uh like fun and as like a white rapper following in the footsteps of people that do uh rap that you're <laughs> no because sorry, be, be, sorry, because, sorry, yeah, because yes. you have a lot of a lot of white rappers that go the route of not parrot like par some some of them do sampling sampling no no not sampling he's sorry he's talking about weird al and Lil Dicky. yeah yeah for sure but like do you ever feel that you get misrepresented with the shit that you're doing because your stuff is not parody obviously it's not meme rap but it is fun and it is different like do you ever get worried about being lumped in with shit that is like not representative of you I, I think you, you could ask uh, Alex, maybe don't want to have the same question. Like, but, we, but sure, like we, for we, sure. Go, we get it all the time and, and it's like, nah, like fuck it. If you want to call us meme rappers, then hell yeah. But like, do you have a problem with that or? No, I don't. Really? Like you, in your heart of hearts, you don't have a problem people dismissing what you're trying to do, your skills and shit like that. When they look at like your bars and stuff and they say, okay, he's like a meme rapper though. Cause I don't he want, said, I because don't... he said some funny shit in one track or blah, 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 blah. Well, because I don't want them to be my fans. I would prefer that my fans are the ones that actually get it. You know, I know what you're at. I know what you're saying. And I don't consider myself a meme rapper. I don't consider baby no money a meme rapper. Yes. But we say some crazy shit because we have a shitload of fun in the studio. And we start, we wild out in the studio and just come up with crazy bars. And then people will say, you know, this is some whatever. Somebody called me uh, an eight hit wonder the other day. Eight hits, that I sounds know, pretty good. I've never eight, heard eight, that before. Eight hit wonder. And I was like, you know what, you're right because- it's seven better than what they used to say. Yeah, because I was like, man, I have seven fucking plaques on my wall, so fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, bro. I don't know, I guess my message out there to anyone who fucking is doubting themselves or yeah, I don't know. Someone calls you a fucking meme rapper. Just keep trying shit, man. Make 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 some bops and and. Would you say within your career and doing everything, would you always say, just do as much as you want, or because I feel like you've done a lot. Same with Alex. You guys, I put you guys in the same boat as rappers. You guys have done a lot together and a lot with other people and just a lot of songs individually. People that are up and coming, <laughs> would you say just keep doing what you want, just keep doing it, release as much as you want, or would you say work on something you like and only release the best stuff? I myself am very fucking uh, particular and picky about everything. Mm -hmm. And I will, man, I will finish songs and then sit on them for a year or more before yeah. I drop it. I'm very picky. Do you feel like that's uh, because the spotlight is on you more now than ever before? No, I've that, always that, I've always been like that. But but, but, but but like back then, do you feel like because you don't have that attention that you can take what's happened uh, in your career line, you can perfect your craft. You don't have as many eyes on it now. It's like if A you bit, if you yeah. fuck up now, or if saying. you think you fuck up now. It's like everyone sees it, including yourself. Yeah. And uh, you kind of no, yeah. go- a, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like now, if I'm dropping a single, like it has to be fucking well, you, You're always going to one-up yourself as well. Yeah. Because you've I, seen like what shit fired. you've achieved. Back then, because there's no eyes on you, you can. it's sort of like you're in the lab and you're experimenting with shit and you're just throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. But now it's like you have made your decisions you're already touring in front of so many people. I have fucking like seven songs that are certified platinum. Yeah, gold. so the, the thing is like, I have yeah. to constantly one up myself and people are being way more critical every single time I do better than the last thing that I did. Yeah. Does this reside with you at all, Max, in any other way? <laughs> <laughs> Can we address the horse in the room? <laughs>
What is horse shirt? And tell me more. This is this is actually the first time I've worn skinny jeans since I was a fucking skater in high school. Okay. You look good though. Do I? You actually look good. You look like a you look younger like a, for some reason. A pencil or something. Pencils are fucking useful as hell. A sexy pencil. Say a sexy pencil. A sexy pencil. Oh, I mean, obviously. I want to get some He doesn't later. need that. He knows that. All right, all right. On the count of three, I need everybody else to say what is on my shirt. One, two, three. Horse. So the new wave this year we've decided is horse shirts. Horse merch. I'm gonna sit back down. I like horses, man. Scott, can you make a horse shirt just for this part? And can we sell like 50 of them? You're doing a lot of push for someone's company we'll that's one. not your own, you know? I think everything that I wear ever is just some shit that I got for free and I'll promote it for free. Me too, bro. Also. Thanks, Scott. You're a legend. Cool shirts. You gonna make me drink that? Are you well, I, I tip my own. I cheers you. What? I feel like we need to do more Bombay Sapphire. No, we'll do a little surgery. We'll do a surgery. We'll move we on. We'll do Bombay. more Bombay Sapphire. It was it was Juicy J who who made me start drinking that. I actually FaceTimed Juicy J yesterday and I was like, bro, you put me on his Bombay Sapphire. He's you like, you want to do the shot? Cause I really need to pee. Yeah, I need to piss too, bro. I'm doing this shit, man. I just took a little fucking shot or whatever that. Fucking stay was. humble. Drink uh, Bombay Sapphire. Bombay Sapphire show. is great, man. I would highly recommend it. Happy. Let's take a piss break. Right, thank God. So Gravy's gotten fucked up. Yeah. It's pretty wholesome. The first thing he does is call his mum. Really? He called his mother? He's on the phone with his mum now. That's my mom, dude. I was just saying that's really wholesome. You have a strong foundation with your own mother. You can build that up and then you can go for other people's mothers without- Absolutely. My, my mom would put me on with other moms for sure. That's fucking that tight, bro. She's, she's, a, she's a real one. And whenever she's had boyfriends, ever since my dad passed, I fucking check them. Like, like we'll, we'll go on a dinner date together. And I, I like, I look them in the eyes. <laughs> Every time that my mom has dated since then, like, I'm fucking... That sounds like on their him, ass. Him, him, a movie fucking trope. Him and his bro. mom. He, oh, sorry, his mom and his new boyfriend are on a date. She goes, "I'm just gonna go for the bathroom real quick." Dude, I will fucking. Yeah, you, you start. Do you, you start inter in. You start interviewing the guy. Dude, I'm a protective motherfucker. Okay. See, see, I don't have anyone else to be protective of in in life. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell, I'm a fucking. I'm, I'm one of them motherfuckers. So, man, I don't know. I'll be like, man. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah, probably. No, no. I'd be, be, be like, I'd be like, man, like, what do you do? Oh, so that's important to you because he has to take care of it. What's the best answer you would exp you would be okay to get back from him? Surgeon. She lives in Rochester, Minnesota, which is like the Mayo Clinic's there. Yeah. Which is the biggest hospital in the world. We have a lot of motherfuckers that live in my in my town that are just there and have like mansions and shit because they have very rare conditions that can't be treated anywhere else. What's the ratio of people, like what's the population of the town to the amount of people who work at that? I think it's about between 150 and 200,000 people that, that live in our town. And the employees of Men Clinic is like 40 to 50,000. Damn, bro. Dang it out. Wait, wh why didn't you do that? What, what, why did you stray from that path? Were your parents encouraging you to follow in their field and work at that hospital? Or were they like, whatever you want to do, honey? Like, And did, the, did you feel that you were looked down upon if you didn't try to do what they did? No. From day one, they both wanted me to do whatever I wanted to do. Shit, I mean, my dad died when I was 16. And then it was me and my mom, but she, she couldn't really handle it. So yeah. I was kind of on my own. I sort of helped handle everything at the at the crib. For how long? Like until well, you just felt in, that you Until you're... college, which was like a okay, year, okay. And, like a year and a half probably. Do you feel like that helped, like prepared you for doing anything after that? Yes. Like more so than a lot of the stuff that you did in school or you did uh, as a- 100%, 100%. I, something traumatic like that, like some, something that really fucks your life up, yeah. like will make you a lot stronger at yeah. like whatever. Not for everyone. You, yeah, right. Not for Not for everyone. Yeah. Well, I feel like it would affect people in different ways. Yeah. But I luckily it still, did still handle could it help. the right way. Yeah. Right. Do you yeah. have any advice for people that might be going through a similar situation to help them out going through that, or did you just? Just, I mean, if you lose somebody that's really special to you, rather than thinking about the fact that they're gone, think about trying to make them proud. Yeah. Whatever you end up doing, like they, they will see that i don't know whatever your belief is and I, and I have some really good friends that that had a similar similar situations and and like kind of helping talk them through that yeah. you know you know everyone has fucking takes l's as, as you get older and i think just you know finding a way to take something that's that bad and make it into you know an inspiration looking at it the right way because I, I personally don't really 
believe in like an afterlife or anything, but it's like I still want to make that motherfucker proud. Yeah. It makes your character stronger if you can persevere after that point and people know that you did that and you're still achieving whatever people can still look up to you who have come from those kinds mm -hmm. of areas or whatever and go like okay he did it why well, can't i you know and 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 everybody everybody that that was in my grade knew me as that dude who was like his dad died yeah, yeah. you know so it was like me going out and doing that it's like kind of probably inspiring for them when they have fucked yeah. up shit happen later i like that I just wanted to go through your uh, tattoos. My tattoos. Yeah, I already know about them all. Okay, Chad, you go. They're all matching tattoos. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Every tattoo know. that I have is matching with somebody. I don't know who they are exactly. I, I can tell remember. you everyone. I can go pretty quick. Wait, you can tell me everyone. Okay, he's better than go me. Go right ahead. All right. If you get them all right, Max, I will scull the rest of this bowl of soju. I will tell you at least three. Oh. Oh, okay, Chad, you say one. I can tell you I'm gay. Okay, go Max, go, shoot the shot. All right. Are you, are you? Your Mario star tattoo on your forearm, show that. That is matching with Thundercat. Thundercat, American indeed. bassist. One of my favorite artists of all time. Okay. And we met and we fucking bonded really hard. So were you guys just like shooting the shit one night, you're like, fuck it, let's get matching tattoos. No, I literally was like, man, I have this chance to go meet Thundercat, I wanna go meet him. And then we linked up in, uh, on the street. He was gonna get tatted and I was like, oh, I wanna get fucking tatted. And I've always, I actually really had wanted this tattoo. And I was like, man, you like Mario? And he was like, yeah, man. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. If Thundercat offered me anything to tattoo on myself, I'd probably do it. Thundercat is fucking awesome. Okay, cool. Right. The Michael Jordan one. This is matching ah! with- I can tell you, bro. With? T-Pain. What's the brand that- Dylan Francis. Dylan. This is matching with T-Pain and Dylan Francis. It is. What's Indeed. the brand? Michael Jordan in the style of Keith Haring. That's God, you're mean. fucking tight, dude. <laughs> this is Keith Haring and Michael Jordan combined. All right. Uh, you got a Lil Peep uh, album cover on your stomach. Indeed. I. Well, that's nice. Cry baby. I. I. A lot of good friends who uh, share that tat as well. You got a uh, uh, Calvin and Hobbes tattoo on your leg with your friend Andrew. You fucking <laughs> got it, bro. I'm fucking on fire, bro. Uh, last one that I fucking know of. You suppose? Okay, uh, can you share that? Snowflake. All right, this one is Snowflake, matching with your day oneers. In Minnesota. There's a, there's a solid 12 people that have that same tattoo in the same spot. That's sick. That's so many. That's, that's like, crazy. That's some like Yu-Gi-Oh shit. So, the, so is that because uh, Minnesota's cold? That's it? You're like, oh, cool snowflake? Cool. Yeah. No, we're icy. <laughs> Actually, no, my, my other, like my second tat is this one. Ooh. What's that for? Is that another matching tattoo? Or? That's a shark. With a, oh, with, cool. With any, any, meaning, <laughs> any meaning or are you just with the boys like, let's get a fucking shark? So there's a fly, there's flowers on it. And and my friend and I, we had like a sort of a, a joke back in the day when we would get really high and we'd say shark mentality. When we, would, wow. we would eat a lot of food. But we also wanted to add some meaning. So I put flowers on the shark because in order to be the top of the food chain, you have to express yourself. That's gay. <laughs> so, uh, Chad, you want to wrap this up? Is there any advice, how we're talking earlier about paving the way and inspiring people from your hometown and like the youth and being the first person to get out of the town and rah, rah, rah. Is there any last minute advice you'd give to people that want to get out of like the norm of being in a situation where they're being guided into something or a job, a career and then breaking into something else? Because you talked about all your struggles and everything you did and how you overcame it and stuff like that. You, you have to be original. You have to do something new. Because if you just start copying the norm, random example, but like Playboy, Playboy Cardi brought a style out that a lot right. of people try to copy. You still get the short-term benefits that some people can reap from following in those shoes. But, never, but what you're saying and, is like long-term, if you yeah, want to make an impact, last. you should be the person who leads rather than the person who follows. And I, yes, absolutely. Just think about it, man. Just think about something new. <laughs> you just sound about, high, bro. I know, I just do sound high, it, but like, just, just think about something different. If you were in a classroom and the teacher said abbreviate <laughs> that advice in five to 10 words, what would you say? Be unique and create your own goddamn sound. 
thank you so much for joining us here in Australia. I mean, I like we, we've been here, what, like eight hours? So so we've been here a long time. So long. We, I've got when the so much fucking shit I want to say. Next but time, next time, next time. You come back right, on next young time? Young Gravy 2, Young Gravy 2. Young Gravy 2? I would do Young Gravy 2. Yeah? Yeah. I'm glad we have like a good little portion of like wholesome shit. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Should we finish it with the uh, Sapphire Bombay? I'm down to finish it with the Sapphire Bombay. Let's finish it with some Bombay Sapphire. That's how you say it. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right, fucking gravy. Let's do a swig. Let's do it, gang. Yeah, yeah, Boy, I guess here, we'll choose these. I'm fucked up. Yeah, the whole squad's turned up right now, baby. <laughs> Tastes like pine trees, man. It's all good. Fog. Pine trees? It's kind of like uh, washing detergent. I'm getting like um floor cleaner. Yeah. You guys are definitely not horse shirt wearers, bro. Ah, uh, that's fair. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on and spending so long with us. This has been beautiful. We didn't even do a gravy shot, bro. Oh like, yeah, we, we did all no this gravy, gravy and we didn't touch any of it. Good. Uh, thank the fucking lord. I don't want uh, that. Uh no gravy shot. No gravy shot. Uh thank thanks. Uh roll the outro. No gravy. Oh. <laughs>